Today I'll show you how I built this motion graphics piece, inspired by the work of Etienne Jacob. It's a torus knot figure, sliding on itself in a loop, with letter characters on each polygon. You can find many tutorials on YouTube on how to build a torus knot, most of them following the Wikipedia mathematical formulas to the letter, but I'll show you a different approach one that will surely make more sense to you as a 3D artist. After that, I'll show you how to distribute text on the generated mesh faces and orient them so that they stick to the surface as they slide. It's not a straightforward process, so I urge you to follow till the end and learn a new thing or two. You can think of a torus knot as a cyclic curve coiled several times around a flattened helix. How's that for an explanation? Don't run away yet, it's easier than you think. Let's start by creating a helix. Now I know that helix comes bundled as a curve primitive, but I'll show you an alternative way to build it. Add a curve line, increase the resolution, and immediately after, append a set position node. This might not seem the most intuitive way to build a helix, but bear with me. Connect a combine XYZ to the position input and insert a vector rotate node. Set the X coordinate to 1 for the moment. This will be the helix radius. We'll rotate the points around the origin in the Z axis. The angle will increase with the factor value along the curve. Keep in mind that the factor value ranges between 0 and 1 while the angle is expressed as a fraction of 2 times pi, or tau. See? We have created a full circle. Now let's offset the points upwards to turn it into a helix. Connect the combined XYZ node into the offset input and feed the spline factor to the Z channel. Currently the curve revolves only once but we can have as many revolutions as we want by multiplying the angle value. Multiply the factor by an integer number, leave it at 2. The effect we're after calls for a closed curve, so set the spline to cyclic before the resample step. We can simplify this node tree by replacing these three nodes with a simple curved circle. It sums all their settings into 1. As I said at the start, this will be a flattened helix, so we don't actually need the vertical offset, it was just to visualize the shape. Now let's coil another curve around this flattened helix. Append another set position. Again, we'll use a vector rotate node. This time we'll set each point position as the center or rotating the normal direction vector around the curve tangent. It sounds a mouthful, but I know what I'm talking about. The angle will be dependent yet again on the spline factor, so just copy this group of nodes from the previous step and change the number of revolutions. Set it to 3. To control the distance from the main helix, scale the normal vector. And there it is, a torus knot, a continuous curve coiled around a flattened helix. You can play around with the number of revolutions for the helix or the coiled part, inner and outer radii. By the way, it's called a torus knot because the curve is projected onto the surface of an imaginary torus. Let's now add thickness to the curve with a curve to mesh operation. Use a curve circle as the profile. Lower the resolution and radius so the faces don't intersect. Next step is animation. I guess you know how to slide one curve along itself. In any case, here's how it's done. We use another set position node. Where do we set the position for each point? We sample the position on the same curve based on the spline factor. All the points are now on top of the original curve. To animate the offset, we'll add time to the factor value. 
Let's map our scene frame length into a 0 to 1 range, which represents our curve factor. To make sure that the curve loops around itself, insert a fraction operation. It will always return just the decimal part of a floating number, which is never greater than 1. Hit play and observe carefully. Our torus knot slides along itself, but something is not right. You can surely catch some wobbling from time to time, breaking the linear pattern of sliding. Let me explain why this happens. Basically, the curve to mesh operation clones the profile curve points on every torus knot curve point and generates a mesh connecting them. It uses both tangent and normal direction vectors from the main curve to orient those profile points along. The tangent vector is easy to understand, it's the direction from the previous point to the current one. The normal vector is a bit trickier. It's supposed to point in a perpendicular direction to the tangent, but perpendicular to what plane? Usually that plane is calculated using the up vector, that is the z direction, or the plane defined by the previous point, current one and the next one along the curve. This method is called minimum twist. Both these methods are the most used ones, but there is actually an infinite number of planes that incorporate the tangent vector. Clearly the method Blender chooses by default is not working for us. Geometry nodes offer a special node called set curve normal. You can choose between minimum twist, Z up and free modes. Set it to Z up. Hit play and see how smooth the animation is. Frame the nodes and name them according to their function. This is the end of the torus knot part. If you want to learn how to distribute text on the faces, keep on watching. Add an instance on points node and feed a string to curves geometry into the instance input. Create a group input for the string field and type motion design into it. Make sure to add an empty space in the end for separation. Don't get scared of the mess you might see in the 3D view. First of all, check the pick instance option. Scale the character size down. Join geometries with the torus knot. Second, use a mesh to points node to generate one template point per face. To have the instances match the face centers, select midpoint from the pivot point menu and use a set position node to position each character by the inverse vector of the pivot point. I've explained this trick in my previous tutorials, so I won't go deep into this now. Hit play. You can see the characters slide with each face along the knot curve but their orientation doesn't match. Well, we can try and align them to the normal direction of each face. Let's do it. From the curve to mesh geometry, branch out a sample index node. Set the domain to faces and the attribute type to vector. Our character types match the face numbers, so their indices do as well. The attribute to sample is normal. Feed that into the vector input of an align Euler to vector node and select Z as the axis to align with a normal direction. And use the result to rotate the instances. Have a look at the 3D view. If some of the letters disappear, switch your view to wireframe mode or just fill the instances curves and extrude them a bit. You can now clearly see the letters point outwards, their z-axis matching the polygon's normal direction, but as the animation progresses, the angle around that z-axis shifts in an unpredictable way. This means that aligning just one axis is not enough. We need at least one other anchor for a stable orientation. What if we align the x-axis of each letter 
towards one of the edges of its corresponding face. Can we even do that? Of course we can. Geometry nodes offer us some very useful tools for that, grouped under the Mesh Topology menu. Before diving into that, let's add another Align Euler to Vector node, keeping the x-axis active. Feed and evaluate at Index node into the empty vector socket and switch the domain to Edges. We want to sample the edge position. The other input we need to provide is the edge index. That is, the index of the edge towards which our character x-axis will be aligned. Now open the Geometry Nodes menu and under Mesh, Mesh Topology, you can see a list of some obscure, dreaded nodes, which most of us, myself included, are not much familiar with. I won't lie, this part gave me quite a headache. There is not much information about these nodes online, or practical examples of their use. Some explanations are even wrong in my view. Anyway, I will only cover a couple of them, the ones needed in this case. There are two nodes dealing with edges, edges of vertices and edges of corners. We'll use edges of corners. Unlike vertices, which are shared across neighboring faces, corners are unique per face. In our case, we're dealing with quads, so each face has four unique corners, which we can address by their index. Connect the Corners of Face node into the Corner Index input. Technically, we need to provide a Face Index field to the Corners of Face Index input, but in this case, since we're sampling faces up here anyway, we might as well omit that. This node outputs just one corner index by default, but we can choose which one by increasing this number. It represents the local index for each face. And by local I mean each face internally starts counting its corners at zero, although the corner index in the spreadsheet editor may have another unique number. Each corner is connected to two edges. We only need one of them and get its position. What exactly does an edge position represent? That's the middle of its two points. To have the direction from this edge's middle point to the face center, we need to subtract that center position vector from this one. Because we're working in the face domain up here in the sample index operator, we can use the position field directly into the vector math node. Now the characters match each face orientation as they slide along the torus knot. Not only that, but now you can choose which edge to point the x-axis to by increasing the sort index value. You might have noticed that although the letters face the right direction, the words are not readable along the curve. The letters index match their face counterpart but the faces order is determined by the curve to mesh operator. It sorts the face rows based on the torus knot curve order. We need to sort them based on the profile curve instead. In previous versions of Blender you would have to tinker with the faces index number to do that, and it would have been a long and painful process, but since version 4 I think, Geometry nodes come bundled with a Sort Elements node. Set the domain to Faces. We won't need to mess with Selection or Group ID. Our faces are part of the same mesh island. What we need to provide it with is a float number representing the factor along the profile curve for each of its control points. Simply capture the factor attribute of the profile curve points before the curve to mesh operation. Then feed the result to the sort weight input. And like magic the letters are sorted in the right order. You can clearly read the words motion design along the surface. If you like the text to loop, use the string length node multiplied by some integer number, I'm using 10, 
and feed the initial circle resolution with it. As it happens, our phrase motion design plus one space is 14 letters long. Multiplying it by 10 sets the circle resolution to 140 points. As far as the animation goes, 250 frames is a short interval for all the letters to run through all the knot curves, so I'm setting the output range to negative 0.2. This should be more pleasing to the eye. In my original video I scaled the instances based on the dot product of their z-axis, which is the face normal direction, and the rendering camera position. This gave it the frenzy look. I could talk without end about customizing this node tree, but apparently only a few people don't mind long videos on YouTube, so this is where I leave it. You can experiment on your own now. I struggled a lot with this piece, but I learned a lot too, and the end result was satisfying to me. I hope you've learned a lot too, and as always, if you like the video, share the knowledge.